in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. Boom, we were the Alice Cooper crew. <laughs> and so now we're going, yes. So now we're going over to Los Angeles as uh, this really weird band. And uh, <laughs> we're, uh, we're playing places that probably uh, was out of our league at the time, but you know, we were going for, you know, the brass ring and uh, we did shows with like the Buffalo Springfield and Three Dog Night. And uh, we kind of realized that we were kind of out of our league. And, and about that time, John Spear, this is pre Neil Smith, was our drummer. And uh, he got real upset. Uh, we were at that time, uh, playing at the Cheetah Club, which used to be the old Aragon Ballrooms. And there was one in uh, LA, New York, Chicago, Paris, and, and uh, London. And uh, she was booking the bands and she said to us, what's your favorite band? Who would you like to see? And we said, Pink Floyd, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. So they came over and they were hanging out with us. <laughs> and oh, they wow. came down to when we played at the Gazaris. I remember the front row, front row of, the, of uh, Gazaris. There's the whole band with Sid Barrett. And uh, at that time, it, it, it was really, really hot summer. They had all the doors open. And I think Alice was, we were all so nervous. Alice is like really going at it, or Vince at the time, you know, and. Right. Still Vince, yeah. He passed out and fell face forward. Thank God the stage was only, you know, 12 inches high. Boom. <laughs> and uh, all the guys in Pink Floyd just laughing like crazy ah, that's a crazy that was part of the act. Yeah. so they hung with us we became the alice cooper group a fast forward to uh two gentlemen from new york chef gordon and joe greenberg run into neil's sister cindy smith at their boat well, how did how did neil get into that how did okay. he end up getting into this, this he crazy he group? was a friend of ours that we used to play uh we played shows with he had a band called uh cloth of many colors which he was the lead singer of he had he had been the drummer i don't like that cloth i don't like that cloth right out of the gate no way there was a band called the Car caravels and uh they had this guy john fitzgerald and he was like doing the mick jagger you know and he was well they moved to compton and uh they ran into a lot of things that uh you know uh the, the compton was a very uh san francisco bedroom Bohemian. and so there was a lot of experimenting with drugs and whatnot and neil just you know he wasn't comfortable with that and uh our drummer john spear uh got upset about something and uh he just up and quit he got in his car and drove home to phoenix without saying so much as uh, adios amigo so uh all of a sudden we're like a four piece <laughs> without a drummer so we we were, and neil had been jamming with us in santa monica at uh, our house there and he uh we asked him i said you come down and play drums with us and he got his drum set and four people into a volkswagen van it was like <laughs> i don't know how that happened and his arms and his arm yeah. he, he came down and now he was our drummer you know big difference john spear was a, a monster on drums he could play 15 minutes you know he was a track star with alice uh Neil was more creative, you know, he, he was his drum solo was he'd stand up and play the cymbals you know, and shh and twirl his drumstick. And so we had to really experiment around with a new sort of uh, gig for the band. You know, we weren't like the Yardbirds anymore. We were more like Pink Floyd. So we right. started getting into that. Uh, along that time, uh, living in Los Angeles, this is a Topanga, Can oh, no, I'm sorry, Laurel Canyon. We uh, we ran into and met uh, the GTOs. Alice started uh, hanging around with them, and uh, Miss uh, Miss uh, was it Miss. For those of you that, here. yeah, the GTOs. Give us a little background yeah. on the GTOs because I do remember that the GTOs were actually even before you know the Runaways and all that. They were the original sort of all girl punk rock sort of vibey exactly. they looked shape. like uh silent movie uh her heroines uh, you know uh the real pale face and miss christine i think it was 
and Allison, they were kind of like uh, two peas in a pod. And she uh, she said, uh, why don't you guys audition for Frank? He's got his new label, Straight Records, uh, on Bazaar, distributed by Warner Brothers. We said, okay. And that comes, to, now we come to the infamous story of 6.30, okay? 6.30. What I, I, I'm unfamiliar with it, so I'm going to sit back and enjoy, okay. the, so, enjoy the ride, enjoy the story. <laughs> Miss Christine says, hey, Frank wants you over at 6.30 to audition for his band. Well, being uh, so hungry and so desperate, we get over there at 6.30 in the morning, set up and go at it. And we're rocking, you know, we're playing pretty much pretties for you. And down comes this really upset looking gentleman, Frank Zappa, and he's going, what the hell's going on here? Well, we're auditioning for you, Frank. He goes, I said 6.30 in the evening. <laughs> and but he then he calms down and he goes, but I got to give it to you. Any band that could set up and play at 6.30 in the morning, I want them on my label. And that was the Alice Cooper. So look at, look at these pictures. I don't know where Vic Chalfant, our illustrious producer of In the Trenches, has got has received these pictures. I know that uh, I know that you might have sent over a few. Vic has gone over a little bit of a rabbit hole. But some of these photos, I'm Laura telling came. you. Yeah, that was all Laurel Canyon. You're, the photos yep. that you're seeing tonight, I, I know a lot of them you might have seen before, folks, but you are going to be treated to some of these photos that have never been shown before. Like this is what our producer has said. He said, "There's, I'm going to show you pictures tonight and on, on this podcast that have never been seen before. So if you are listening to this on an audio podcast, broadcast uh make your way on over to the video that's one more thing and, and obviously hit the subscribe button right Vic? how about that for a shameless plug you know you're on ryan rocks the official hit the subscribe button to check out all these never seen before photos of mr michael bruce and the rest of the alice cooper band who at this point is alice alice, More alice cooper. we have a deal with frank zappa so what happened was Shep Gordon and Joe Greenberg wander into the boutique and the boutique is Cindy Smith. And she goes, yep. My brother's in yep. Yep. and so they come out to Topanga Canyon where we're living in their beat up old, uh, environmentally, environmentally incorrect, uh, uh, Cadillac that's streaming this blue smoke out the back of this. It's like, uh, yeah, apocalypse now, you know, it's like this shit. Well, come on, man. Let's admit everything was environmentally That's incorrect right. in those days. I mean, today it might be all politically incorrect. Back then it was environmentally incorrect. Right. Like, so they, we played for them and they go, okay, uh, yeah, okay, we'll uh, we'll be in touch, you know, and they're staying at the Landmark Hotel with Jimi Hendrix and, and Pink Floyd, and a lot of bands stayed up. And, um, so what happened between now and then? Uh, we went and uh, Frank said, you guys are on the label. So we went into Hollywood, uh, Neil and I, went to the Landmark Hotel and hung out with Joe and Shep. And we said, oh, by the way, we've got a deal with Frank Zappa. So that was, <laughs> Shep goes, okay, that's great. He said, let me go in and be your manager and I'll get a better deal for you. So we said, that sounds great. So Shep went in and Frank and his manager, Herbie Cohen, were, were very upset because Herbie was managing all the bands, Captain Beefheart. Wild he wanted Man to Fish. get in on a little piece of Alice Cooper. Yeah, exactly. I see. Exactly. And uh, after Frank calmed down, he said, okay, I don't care. It doesn't matter because uh, those all of those groups on straight records, like the movie, the producers, were destined to fail because what Frank needed at the time was not – not mediocre bands in, in the album. He needed he needed write offs for yeah, yeah. Bizarre because it's his like, album. It's, it's literally the screen the script of the producers. I love it. So, so yeah. this is how you end up making a Frank Zappa produced album called Pretties for You. Correct. Is, Correct. Is that it? And look at that album cover. If, if, Folks, if that doesn't scream art right there, De I mean, Dennis Dunaway would be so proud of that. Is that is that uh, Dennis and Cindy in later years? Look at me. Come on. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, actually, when we went to Frank's house, uh, he wants to discuss the Alice Cooper. He's got a great idea. I want you to call the band Alice Cookies. 
and we'll make a tin and these hip hop records that you see in the back of comic books where you can play these little discs, all your, all your records will be like on smaller than a 45, kind of like a CD now yeah. and stack of 12 of them in this can and you'll be the Alice Cookies band. Okay, Frank. <laughs> thank that, you. Was, very that much. was that was Frank's idea. That was Frank's was... idea. Yes, oh, Alice wow. Cookie. <laughs> if you were so we have so much to Alice be Cookie for. <laughs> we have so much to be thankful for right? that we weren't Alice Cookies. So we were looking around in his house, and Dennis goes, "Wow, oh, what's that?" The, the, which ended up to be the cover, of pretty screwed. It was right. a, a huge painting. And uh, it was, I forget the artist, uh, Dennis knows, but uh, boom, that's the album cover, which will later. Dennis might actually be in the chat right now. We love, we love Dennis Dunaway uh, for, and Cindy as well for coming in. Uh, they, they are actually in the trenches. Hi, guys. Uh, supporters. Of the, Dennis has been on the show as well. Uh, for any of you that want to check out any of those older um, podcasts, uh, they are on Ryan Roxy Official. Again, another shameless plug in 2021. But uh, we are talking about um, the thing I wanted to talk to you about on that album, Pretties for You. And you actually sang a couple songs. I mean, I did, you, had, I did, you, uh, you did sing, uh, was, it, was that the song Sing Low, Sweet Cheerio? Sweet Cheerio. Oh boy, I think that was before that. I think that was. I think that was the next one. Okay. I think okay. That was, uh, easy action. That part of easy uh, action. Okay. I was saying together, basically, a lot did all the harmonies together, and and of course Neil and Dennis, Neil and Dennis, and and uh, Glenn didn't sing so much, but we all sang backgrounds and whatnot, and Alice and I did the tight harmonies, and uh, that was pretty much. Uh, the thing, interesting thing. Uh, so we're in the studio in Burbank, and uh, Frank's our producer, right? Oh wow! There he goes. We a nice we, shot of it, folks. He was. She showed up for three days, and then this, he got. Is this Briggs? Is this the the guy, the producer Briggs that that is producing? No, this, that, we're coming up to that. We're coming okay. up to that. Frank's the first producer, right? Right. He gets sick, so. The next producer, this is on this on the easy action. No, I'm sorry. Um, this is pretty for you. Then in then in comes um, Herbie Cohen. He's now our producer because Frank's sick. He falls asleep on the couch, so he bails. And Ian <laughs> Underwood comes in and finishes the album. Thank God, he did Little Mermaid soundtrack on Disney. Wow. Who can and forget? Keyboard player from the Mothers. Amazing guy. Amazing guy. We owe it to him. He finishes the album. Fast forward to the next album, Easy Action, and David Briggs, you know, Crazy Horse, Neil Young. Yeah. So what's it like working with uh, David Briggs? Well, we walk into the studio, and he goes, all right. He puts his, he puts his uh, cowboy boots up on. He's rolling a joint. He goes, okay, let's hit it. And we plan <laughs> along, and we go, okay, that's a take. Next song. Okay, next song. Next. Wow. And the album's done in probably a day. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a, a Saturday, Saturday Night Live oh, skit. It does. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so all the, all the studio money that uh, didn't get used, he probably packed it in his wallet and took off, you know. So uh -huh. now we have easy action. You know what? That is a good producer plan. You know, exactly. re record the album in one afternoon, a budget it for like, because folks, back in those days, you know, what did a long album take? Two weeks to record? Three weeks to record? So, I mean, yeah, at least. things went pretty quick, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so that was that. <laughs> so, we were now, we now had Easy Action out. So, didn't Easy Action end up, at one point, didn't it end up being the rehearsal tapes that ended up being the final album? No, that was just one song. Okay. That was, uh, oh, wait a minute. No, that was, uh, that was, uh, uh, Levity Ball. Okay. And okay. I, I don't, I'm not sure if that was on the first album. What? Time is taking its soul. <laughs> no, but those first two albums, man, those are sort of the, I, I'm not, I don't want to say forgotten albums because they, they know, you know, the hardcore Alice Cooper fans will crucify me if I say forgotten albums, but pretty is for you and, uh, and easy action. I, I get uh, comments all the time from the hardcores about those two albums. Why don't you play those? 
couple songs off those albums, you know, with Alice. You got to check it out. But we're, we're entering into this, I, uh, for lack of a better term, this golden age of the Alice Cooper group. Because or the amniotic period. <laughs> perhaps, yes. And there it is. Uh, we can go back to that little, uh, that, that, that here's is something that Vic, our producer, put up. It, it says, the NAS, formerly the Spiders, five members, uh, formerly Phoenix Group, now based in Los Angeles, specialize in freaky rock and instrument, <laughs> instrumental hangups. Uh, Venice Beach, California. Was that you put an ad in the paper as. Uh, did, did you realize that that actually happened or was that some sort of well, shepherd? Really, one of the best reviews from that period, I think, I, I, I think it was pretty for you review. It was like, like sitting in on a jam session at an insane asylum. <laughs> that was <laughs> <a review. laughs> That's better than shark sandwich. I got to say. <laughs> and Frank, when he did his book later on, he goes about the Alice Cooper period. He goes five guys from Arizona. Woo! I wish I could have said that. <laughs> yeah, so, so there the you have it. So that that pretty much sums up that period, and, uh, and, and we're still going 70s, back to Arizona, early seventies. Yeah, so late seventy or late sixties, early seventies. But then comes nineteen seventy one, yeah. and in come and in come walks this tiny, tiny little Canadian named Bob Ezrin. He's, he's oh, not, yes. this is not life size. This is not life size. He's a little taller than that. But folks, <laughs> tiny, tiny man, huge talent, uh, Bob Ezrin. He comes in and produces what you could, you could say or nay your breakthrough. Go ahead. Absolutely. I'll let you get yeah, it. Third, love it third, third hit from the sun, right? <laughs> well, so we, Finishing up, we're we're uh, we just did Easy Action. We're playing shows now with Three Dog Night, Buffalo Springfield. Oh boy, you know we don't have our gig together yet. So, so we moved to Pontiac, Michigan. Uh, we searched and searched for a place to live. We end up on Pontiac, Michigan, on a dirt road in a forsaken area, <laughs> and it's a little farmhouse with a barn, but the thing was, it had a huge indoor paddock for horse training, and it was like a football field, lights, and then there was a, a workshop area. We could play 24-7, and that's where we start working on the material. Shep's looking around for the next producer, and uh, he, the guests who have American Woman, huge hit, so he goes up to Canada and camps yes. out on the doorstep <laughs> just every day, like... And and, uh, and uh, uh, their producer, um, guess who? Jack Richardson. Damn. He's going. We got to get this guy off the porch. He goes. The next person that messes up on at Nimbus Nine has to produce the Alice Cooper group. <laughs> so oh, I guess at eh, Bob being the new Bob guy. Lost the, the Bob lost the bet. Bob lost exactly. So he's got to go. And I, I I got in the car and rode to the airport past the big tire in Detroit and ride all the way back. And actually I'd heard some of uh, some of the stuff that he did with April Wine and of course uh, Ursa Major. He was playing keyboards at the time. And Who's I'm going, going, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy, right? So we're out in the out in the horse paddock workshop working on the material with Bob. And uh, Bob is, by the way, a piano virtuoso. And uh, his dad wanted him to be a doctor. He goes, sorry, Dan, I'm going to be a rock and roll producer. Look, my hairs are almost long. <laughs> so anyway, so, you know, he being the creative soul that he is, you know, he's all these piano parts and, you know, and by about the third or fourth, fifth song, I'm going, Bob, you know, I play a little keyboard, you know, but I can't do what you're doing and play guitar and, and he somehow got offended, and, and so he goes, I quit. And I said, no, you're fired. And he goes off pouting. <laughs> Shep comes in and coming, coming. It's okay. It's okay. So oh, yeah. we make a oh, kiss. It's, it's it's because he met the Dalai Lama. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, that's, the, the, uh, that, that's the story that I'm edgy. He came to see us live, which was right. I'm 18. He's hearing I'm edgy. So... Uh, so we kiss and make up, right? And we go on to finish up uh, Love It to Death. 
Good amazing, amazing, amazing. You know, that, that album was uh, a, a watershed album for us, you know, because now we had a place to play. We had the full band and we started rocking out. And uh, one of the major things that happened during that period is we acquired our own PA. Anybody who's ever been in a band knows if you don't have your own PA and you're going from club to club, you're at the mercy of the shit that's there. You know, it's like, oh, here's a, P well, we got some speakers blown out here. You know, sorry about that. Yeah. And uh, we could, we couldn't sound the same every night, you know, and we had our show worked up with the electric chair and God, it's just awful. So one of the things that we accomplished when we were at uh, the farm on, on uh, Brown Road was our roadie, very talented guy, Martin Priest, builds us a kick-ass PA. And now, man, the night, night, next that, night, next. That, that might be it. as integral to your sound. Yeah. That might be, that, that, that's as important to your, to the band sound is, is having a consistent Absolutely. PA every single night. Of course, Absolutely. man. Makes and sense. we started kicking ass so much that here this upstart band from Arizona, California now, guess who's opening for us? Ted Nugent. Ah, and we just shot to the top and love it to death. There's another story there with I'm 18 CKLW. Dude, I, I have to ask this question. Sure. Honestly, there's so many great uh, questions and sort of things coming into my mind right now that I've wanted to ask for years. And I'm glad we're having this talk. And obviously I'm thinking in my head al already, it's like, shit, we're going to ha definitely have a part two because this is so, this is so, really really riveting right now but I, I always wanted to know why the band you're based in la you have two albums out why what was the allure of detroit was there was there a free rental there or was there no. some girls there or what was detroit leo finn managed he, he he's booking this band the pleasure seekers all girl bands susie quattro the fonz is Sister, I think on I of course everybody right. knows knows Leather Tuscadero. Well, he was he was booking them all over. Okay, we're in Michigan, we're in Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, all of these places. We're now playing, and we're like causing a sensation. Love it to death comes out, and that was the attraction. You know, he he kept us working, and now we're coming into our own with our kick-ass PA. And that's where we cut our teeth, so to speak, in Michigan. We became- that's where you grind, you, you basically were in the trenches, you're grinding it out. It, it's it's very uh, similar to the sense of the band I was in called Electric Angels, where we moved out of Los Angeles because we couldn't get a record deal after being passed on by every single label. We moved to New York, but part of the idea of moving to New York was that we could play Philadelphia, Boston, Jersey, and you could you could actually work. Whereas, exactly. like you said earlier in the podcast, if you're in Arizona, there's you know you got New Mexico and you got LA, you're like and you get arrested, right? <laughs> I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System Twelve Guitar Method. Hello folks, Roxy here. Thanks for watching the video. And if you liked it, hit the subscribe button or one of the videos around me to watch more. If you'd like to, please leave a comment. If you didn't like the video, maybe you'll forget how to type. <laughs>